1922 British Everest expedition was groundbreaking. They, they smashed the previous altitude record, they were exploring new ground, and they were using oxygen for the first time ever in a mountain environment. And of course, when you consider all the equipment they were using, how rudimentary that all would have been, you put it all together in the mix, that expedition of 22, I think, stands out above all others on Everest, in including the 53 Everest expedition, because everything was new to them. They traveled literally for months to get here, uh, all across India, into Tibet, and round onto the north side of Everest, and then lay siege, in a way, to the mountain, and were on the mountain again for a number of months, facing all, all the hardship that you would expect. It was a couple of years later, in 1924, that their, their, their feats were, were recognized by Baron Pierre de Corpetan, the founding father of what we now consider to be the modern Olympics. When he put the Olympics together in, in, the, in the way that we know now in 1894, he said there should be an award for, for alpinism, for climbing. The powers that be would look back over the last four years and decide what was the most outstanding feat, I suppose. So the achievements of the 1922 British Everest expedition were so up there that for the first time ever, Corbettan decided to award the Olympic gold medal. And in Corbettan's own words, he personally awarded the medals and they were awarded for outstanding feats of human endeavor on the slopes of Mount Everest. Lieutenant Colonel Strutt pledged to take one of those medals at the next opportunity to the very top of the world. The pledge has never been fulfilled. And then after that, the, the medals and the story of the pledge got lost from quite early on in my climbing career, traped halfway around the world to walk up hot, dusty valleys to seek out unknown mountains and to tread where no one's been before. And I th think maybe that's why I have such an affinity with those early Everest expeditions, because they were doing pretty much the same sort of thing. They were, they were explorers as much as mountaineers. Uh, all sorts of names that I recognise. Joe Tasker, Peter Boardman, Mick Burke, all died on Bonington expeditions. But at the top here, we've got Norbu, Lakpa, Pasang, Pemba, Sangi, Dorji and Temba. Indian high altitude porters. Died 7th of June, 1922. The first people to lose their lives on Mount Everest. And it was uh, Arthur Wakefield, whose medal we have with us on this trip, who, who witnessed the whole event. You can only imagine what he must have been thinking when he saw that avalanche sweep everybody away. And of course there was Mallory there as well. Who they frantically tried to save or dig, dig out the, the high altitude porters. I think, uh, I think nine were buried and they managed to save two. But seven lost their lives. And that really moved Wakefield, who was of course a medic. Still a very dangerous mountain despite all the modern equipment and better weather forecasting and greater knowledge of how the mountain works. You can still very easily take your life in just a blink of an eye. Wow, looks like finally at base camp. <laughs>